Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Solution Moment. Uh, it's another day again. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're going to be sharing something interesting through God's Word, and it's going to refresh you, it's going to build you, and it's going to catapult you to the next level of your life. Uh, before we begin this program, I will humbly request that you subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, do that for us right now. You can subscribe to our YouTube page and also uh, click the bell on the side so that every time we are coming up with our program, we'll be able to notify you as fast as possible. And also you can share us on your Facebook, uh, share our link on Facebook and also on all the social media platform in which we are coming uh, live today. Today we're going to be talking about in your trial in your trial. Let us pray quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity today to be able to share your word with your people. I ask that revolutionary knowledge will be impacted to everyone and that we share God's word. People's life will be changed and people's life will be blessed. Thank you for another opportunity today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, we're diving straight to the Word of God, and we're going to begin uh, today by talking about in your trial. Remember that it's our month of manifestation, and you must understand that to manifest things, you know, uh, to unveil things, to reveal things, it's not easy. It's like a woman being pregnant. For her to be able to produce that child, for her to be able to give birth to the child, that nine months is not an easy joke for those uh, who have been through that part before. The same thing for you to manifest the God in you, for you to manifest that which God has put in you, for you to reveal Christ in you, for, for God, the Godhead to be revealed in you. You know, you need to understand that there are going to be trials. And that is why I'm sharing with you, just to encourage you, titled, In Your Trial. All right, Psalm 22, uh, the book of Psalms 22, I want us to read um, from that interesting thing that I want us to read from there. I just wanted to bless you, Psalm 22, uh, from verse 1, the book of Psalms. Get out your Bible as well. Let's study together. Psalm 22 from verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words, look at that, and from the words of my groaning. You see, when you are in your trial, sometimes this could be some words that comes out of your mouth. See, he says, my God, my God. This was Jesus. He said this in the in. Um, uh, in, in Gethsemane, when he was hung on the tree on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God. You know, we say, uh, 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 you know, when he was speaking in the Aramaic, you know, uh, Eli, Eli, la sabatani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, these were prophecies. You see, that's why I told you that the scriptures, the message of the scriptures is Jesus. Everything the Old Testament prophet said, you got to look for it very carefully because they are actually preaching Christ. They were projecting, they were speaking about what Jesus was coming to manifest on the face of the earth. That is why when you read the scripture, especially the Old Testament, you better get attention to it and be able to pick out who they are trying to project. The Old Testament is not just people, prophets who sat down and they feel like talking. No, they were inspired, you know, uh, to say certain things, but in mysteries. But when the owner came, it was not a mystery to him. He stepped into everything they said. So what Jesus said on the cross of Calvary in Aramaic, which is translated in English, uh, in English, this is what the English says. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That's Psalm 22, uh, verse 1. And then he said, why art, thou for, why art thou far from helping me? You see, when Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus took the sin of the whole world upon himself, Guess what? He was separated from his father for the very first time. Remember that Jesus was the word of God. 
So for the, for the very first time, God was separated from his word, who became flesh and dwelt among us. And the reason why he was separated from him was because of the sin, because God cannot behold sin. You see, so there are spiritual uh, implications to what Jesus did between that time and the time he went to heaven and placed his blood on the mercy seat and sprinkled the heavens and then came back and equipped his disciples for the final shot. So there were a lot of things that happened there. But because we are talking about in your trials, and you must understand that in your trial. It's also the trial of Christ. You will see Christ in your trial. Every time you don't see Christ in your trial, then it means it's a total different game. So the scripture says here, uh, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groanings? See that. I want us to read this in the Message Bible quickly. Or the New Living Translation. God, God, my God, why did you dump me miles from nowhere? See that? You know, when you are in your trials, these are the things that, you know, that go through your mind, especially when you are going through situations where there is no help, there is nobody you can call, and everyone you try to call have their own stories, and some now start using you as a, as a major news, you know, to everybody, and your, 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 your trial has become the topic of the town, and everybody is now knowing and understanding or seeing what you are going through. You are not alone. The Bible said that Jesus faced it. Jesus faced it. You can understand that uh, till when Jesus became uh, manifest at 30, you can understand the kind of lonely life he had to go through because remember that people are human and understanding the bad of Jesus very well, understanding what the mother went through in carrying him in nine months and after he was born and what the people around him were saying and still when he went into the ministry, what they were also saying, Jesus was in trials as well. And it heated him most when he was on the cross for the very first time he was separated from his father because of the sin of the world. There are times like that, Pastor Wayne, when it looks as if God have turned his back against you. Look as if where everybody you hope on have turned their backs against you. But remember, at that period of time, it's not truly because God has turned his back. It's that the word of God should be fulfilled at that particular time. And I trust that you will see that, that in your trial, the silence of God does not mean his absence. You see that? All right, let's go to verse 2. He said, Oh my God, I cry day. Daytime, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you did not hear. In the night season, I am not silent. See that? And then verse 3, verse 3. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. You see, that must not depart from your mouth in the time of your trials. To constantly give God praise. To let you look at what Jesus said. He said, in spite of what he was facing, in spite of what he was going through, God was still enthroned. He has not lost his place. Your situation must not make you feel as if God has lost his throne. Remember, he was not voted in. He was not nominated. You see that? He was not appointed. He was not chosen there. He is God all by himself. You see, so your situation cannot make God run away. Your trials or your temptations or whatever we are going through cannot make God lose his sleep or lose, I call the Bible say, another sleep must slumber. He cannot allow God to switch off his spiritual cell phones or decide that he's not, he's not going to listen to you. That's a lie. You know, sometimes when you can't trace God's hand in the middle of your situation, let's trust him. Let's trust him. And that's exactly what the psalmist said here in respect to what Jesus had to go through to know that in spite of his trial, yes, God is still enthroned. And that's what the scripture says in verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. Sorry, verse 3. I think verse 3. Verse 3 says, verse 3. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Yes, he's holy, enthroned in the praises of Samuel. You can put your name there. Uh -huh. Verse 4. 
Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. Uh -huh. So there must always be reference. They cried to you and you, were, you, you delivered them. They trusted in you and they were not ashamed. See that? You and I will not see shame. If that is the target of the enemy, he knows how to advert us. Even though if we have allowed it, but God knows how to deliver us from it. Yes. There are situations you might be in right now. Yes. You are the cause. Yes. You made it happen. Yes. You made a blunder. Yes. Everything is yes against you. But you see, when God intervenes, he knows how to turn it around for you and I. He knows how to make it to work together for our good. So that at the end of the day, it's all going to be God alone be praised. God alone be glorified. God alone be exalted. And that's what is going to happen to your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I want us to read this because it's very lengthy, but I will not have that um, much time to read all of them, but I encourage you to read them. They cried to you and you delivered them. You were, and were delivered. They trusted in you and we are not ashamed. Verse 6. But I am a worm, and no man a reproach of men, and despised by the people. This is the language the psalmist could use. You are not a worm, you are a child of God. And then verse, go to the next verse, verse 7. All those who see me ridicule me, see that? They, sh they, they shoot at their lips, they shake their head saying, uh -huh, verse 8. He trusted in the Lord, let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delight in him. We remember all this in, the, in, uh, in Gethsemane, uh, when Jesus was on the cross. We remember all this statement that was made by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and said, ah, if he's the son of God, why is God not helping him? People still do the same thing today. But he goes to church. But he's a pastor. Oh, he's a bishop. Oh, he's a hypocrite. Oh, no, just because... It's like a teacher. Just because you're a teacher does not mean you don't write exams. Just because you're a teacher does not mean your children will not go to school. Just because you're an examiner does not mean your children will not be examined by somebody else. Just because you're an examiner or you're a principal does not mean that your children will not go to school. Just because you're a lecturer does not mean that your children will not go to school to be lectured by somebody else. Going through challenge in life has nothing to do because of your title. Never. Going through challenge or trials and persecutions or whatever the story is, is not because of your title. Every person go through trials. Every person. It doesn't matter who they are. Yes. Good people go through trials. Good people face storms. That you can explain. You can see that in the life of Jesus. Jesus never stole. He never did anything, but he was persecuted. All manner of things were said about him, you know. But still, he understood that it was for a season. So the same thing. People are going to say that to you just like they said to Jesus. He said he trusted in God. He served God. He said he's serving God. He said God is his maker. He said God is his deliverer. But why is this God not delivering him? Why is this God not helping him? Why is this God not fighting for him? Why is this God? You know, you hear all manner of stuff from people. As if they themselves are immune to trials. As if they themselves are immune from challenges. As this they themselves are immune. You see, no one is immune from trials. No one is immune from, from situations. None of us is immune from storms. Yes. Nobody is immune from storms. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you are a president, whether you are a governor, whether you are a mayor. It doesn't matter the office you bear. You are not exempted from trials. You are not exempted from storms. You are not exempted from situations. So let nobody fool you and say, ah, but he says he's a, he's, a, he's a pastor. Oh, he says he's that. Hey, he says he's that. It doesn't matter what you say you are does not mean you will not face situation. Let that not discourage you. Oh, but, but I'm facing situation. It means God is not with me. It's a lie. It's a lie. With everything that Jesus faced, does it mean that God was not with him? It's a lie. It does not mean that God is not with him. 
That's a lie from the pit of hell. So let nobody tell you that God is not with you because you are facing trials or you are facing situations or you are facing storms or you are facing whatever the story is. Let nobody tell you that. Let nobody tell you that. So encourage yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord and stick to what God has promised you. Let's read one verse there. Uh, one more verse. He trusted in the Lord. See that? He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. See, this is what people say. He trusted in the Lord. Let this God rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Let's read this in the New Living Translations. Let's see what they are saying there. He says, see that. Is this the one who relies on the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. See what the mockery they were making to Jesus. So in your trials, in my trials, in our difficult times, present or ahead, whatever it is, these are going to be mockeries you are going to face. But I thought she said she go to church. Oh, I thought they said she she prays. Oh, I thought they said she fast. Oh, I thought they say she, oh, I thought it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let that not discourage you. Oh, I don't know where to put my face now. People are going to say all manner of things about me now. And 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 I thought they said I serve God. Oh, I thought eh, eh, in your trials. Get ready for all manner of stuff. But it does not mean that God is absent. You, the, the trials and the tests and whatever we all go through, whether failure or disappointment or whatever it is, it doesn't mean that God has written us off. No. In all that we are going to go through, whether failure, mistakes, error, or whatever it is, men are entitled to say what they want to say. But you must understand that you are a child of God, that God is not going to abandon you just because you made a mistake or you fell into an error or there's a mistake or there are stuff that you are going through right now. God is not going to quit on you based on your mistakes or because you failed. The Bible says the righteous will fail seven times and will rise up again. Maybe you have failed twice, three times, but you have not gotten to that mark yet where you think that God can reach you. Listen, there is nothing you're going to do to make God hate you or make God give up on you. Remember, he poured out his love towards us. I call it the liquid love. That love will follow you. It doesn't matter, except you cease breathing or you die without, you know, that love finding you. But that love will find you. The love of God will find you no matter what you've done. Praise God. Let's read one verse. Um, let's read that translation in the Message Bible. Um, this is a New Living Translation. It says, let's see, <laughs> let's see how God handles this one. Since God likes him so much, let him help him. See, verse 9. Let's see verse 9. Verse 9. And to think you were midwives in my bath, <laughs> setting me at my mother's breast. Verse 10. Oh, glory. When I, when I left the womb, you, you cradled me. You cradled me. Since the moment of birth, you have been my God. It's not going to change. From your mother's womb, from my mother's womb, everything my mother went through, everything my father went through, everything your mother, your father went through, did not stop God's existence. Yes. God has not brought you this far to abandon you now. God has not brought you this far to leave you now. God has not brought you this far to say adios. God has not brought you this far to say, okay, let's leave her now, and it's okay, I've tried. No. He says to us emphatically, I will never leave them nor forsake them. I will be with them till the very end. And that's the gospel truth. If you are in jail... If you're in the hospital, you're going through trials, whatever the situation is, it's closer to you than anybody else. You have so many chances. He has created so much chance for you to come back home. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I love that verse. Take our time to go through 
that whole uh, science is going to really bless you, you know. So, when we are faced with trials, how will our prayer go? We are going to look at Jesus. Remember, Jesus is my standard. All right, John chapter 17 and verse 1 to 6. I want us to read from verse 1. In our prayer always, when we are faced with challenged, let's see what Jesus did when he was also faced with challenged or when Jesus was in trials. All right, John chapter 17, verse 1. He said, Jesus spoke this word, lift up his eyes to the heavens and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Glorify your son that your father, look at that. Glorify your son also may also glorify you. You must understand that. Jesus spoke these words, lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. So in your trial, in our trials, in our circumstances, in our challenges, we must understand this verse we are reading here. Yes. That is also for God to glorify you and for you to be glorified. Whatever happened in the trials, whatever happened in your, in your test or in your temptations, in your errors or in your mistake or whatever the outcome is, is only a shock to God. It's all going to work out for your good. So I want us to read this uh, as we uh, begin conversations on this line. And verse, verse 2 of that chapter 17. It says, As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. I told you, Jesus is eternal life himself. You see? So the words that came out of his mouth were eternal life. So verse 3. Verse 3. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So no matter what is going to happen around you, they will know you, they will know you, I. Because at the end of the day, it will be God has been with him or God is with him. So the scripture says this is eternal life that they, they, they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. See that? Verse 4, I love this. We're going to spend time on this in one of our broadcasts. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Uh -huh. That's Jesus. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Verse 6. I love this one. I have manifested your name to the, the, the men whom you have given me out of the word. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. See, in your trials, don't lose focus. Don't despair. In your challenge, in your situations, in the storms that comes across your life, you must understand what is God's view, what is God's perspective about this. You see, I know sometimes when you sleep or you sit down, you say to yourself, oh God, I know I've messed up. Yes, you know you've messed up, but God does not see your mess up. He has gone beyond your mess. He has turned your mess into a message. Yes, God does not see the stumbling block. All God sees is building blocks to your success. So you got to understand as Jesus, look at the way Jesus related here in his own trials. The focus was him and the Father. Sometimes the trials and the tests and the temptations and all the things that come against us is to make us lose focus from God and from what he has called us to do. So in your trials, be focused. In your trials, maintain composure because that's the, 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 the essence of the enemies, you know, all manner of schemes around us. To make us lose focus, make us lose composure, make us lose identity of ourselves and start doing a guesswork, thinking maybe God has abandoned us and God has said it's over with us. If God has begun a good work in me or in you, he will finish it. It doesn't matter the transitions, it doesn't matter the storms, it doesn't matter what is happening around our life. God is saying to you, maintain your composure. Maintain your focus. Maintain the God factor in your life. Just like Jesus had to do. That you will finish your assignment. Your purpose will be accomplished. 
whether the enemy like it or not, whether the trial like it or not, whether the attack like it or not, whether whatever it is like it or not, you will finish your assignment. You will finish your purpose here on earth. You know, Satan can stir up anybody against you. Yes, he can stir up anybody. It doesn't matter if they are wearing suit. It doesn't matter if they are in government. And let me throw this at you. One of the people that Satan used mostly, especially when the enemy is reacting against you, is people in authority. Satan specializes in using men in authority to stir up his anger against God's people. Yes. That's why major laws around the world is against the church of Jesus Christ. And the people who can enforce that are politicians, those that are in government. That's why we pray for God's men and God's women to be in power because these are the ones who can stand in the gap and say no to the enemy. That is why Satan can stir up hell against any voice that God raises up, whether in government. That's why we need to pray for some certain Christian leaders who are spoken. Yes, we have to pray for them. Especially in this country, we have to pray for Justice uh, uh, Mukwena. Is it Mukwena Mukwen? We got to pray for him. We got to pray for him as a church. We must not be ex excited that God is using him and is so instrumental for the purpose of God. We have to pray for him so that Satan will not raise up political guys who will remove him. Yes, this is how the enemy works. Let me say that to you again. Satan's greatest asset when he wants to truly perpetrate his evil against God's people, he uses people in government. He uses people in authority. That's why sometimes your boss just flee. Sometimes your, best, your boss just decides to come against you. I'm also a Christian. You, your own is too much. It's not him. Look, it doesn't matter if he's wearing a suit or driving a, a Lamborghini. He is, can just be a candidate of Satan. Satan can use him very well. It doesn't matter how beautiful she is or how beautiful or handsome he is. Satan can use him very well. Because remember, the Bible said that Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. So Satan can enter anybody just to persecute you. Satan can enter anybody just to stir up things against you. But let's stand our ground in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4. And verse 6, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. So we saw in the life of Jesus as we go there that his prayer was focus. Be focused in your prayer and let's be focused in our prayer. Zechariah 4 verse 6. You know the scripture. It says, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by his spirit. Let's read together. He says, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of Zerubbabel. Uh, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Yeah, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. See that? To Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by what? Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, say the Lord of hosts. You see? It's not by power, it's not by might, but by his spirit, say the Lord of hosts. So you got to understand that it's not going to be by your strength. It's not going to be by your own human, you know, smartness. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. So no matter what you're facing right now, it's not by power, it is not by might, but by his spirit, say the Lord. Allow the spirit of God to take over our lives. And then I love what it says in Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. Look at what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, it says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Can we read this in the New Living Translation, please? See that? It says, Keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. See that? This is amazing. Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. You see why prayer is important? Why we got to intercede constantly? Why we have to pray constantly? Because the enemy is out there. The Bible calls him a roving lion looking for who to devour. 
Satan is out there. In spite of you not having food now, he will create another situation. In spite of you not having money now, he will make other things worse so that the things get worse. Maybe there's a mistake here or there's a mistake there. He will, he will stir up so many things against you. Remember, as long as there are piles of trials in your life, it's a sign that there are going to be piles of blessings ahead of you. Never forget that. There are greater things ahead of you. The more the enemy attack over your life, the more challenge you face, the more brighter days are ahead of you. The more glorious days are ahead of you. So I speak strength upon your life. I speak an unusual strength upon our lives that no matter what is happening to you right now, it's not over with you. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. I want you to see something here. Watch and praise what the scripture says so that you do not fall into temptation. He said, for the, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. No matter what you're facing right now, let's try as much as possible, not give room to the flesh. All right, Romans 3, verse 3. See what he says. For what if some do not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? See, what if some do not believe? What if some do not believe? It doesn't matter how many do not believe in you. Because your trials, your temptations, look at when Jesus was going through his trials, all his disciples abandoned him. His disciples abandoned him. The people he trusted, his apostles, his closest apostles, P James, uh, Peter, James, John, they were nowhere to be found. The Bible said, if you study very well, he said they followed him from afar. They followed him from distance. Peter denied him. You see, God allows you sometimes that when we are going through our trials and temptation, our, conf our trusted allies, our confident friends, family relatives, you can call them. They will be the first to desert you. They will even be the first to go around pognosing around your story. They will first be the ones going around spreading the stories about you. They will first be the one to throw stones and say to you, but he goes to church. He fasts, he gives offering, he does this. They will count all the so-called good things you have done for God and say, where is the God that he has been serving? But they don't know that in your trials, no matter what good you have done, does not immune you from trials. Never forget that. No matter what you've done, will never immune you from trials. You will go through trials. You see? So the Bible tells us that his apostles abandoned him. His disciples abandoned him. But you know, God will never leave us without a consolation. He will never leave us without a consolation. Even when the disciples all left Jesus, they abandoned Jesus. Because they didn't really understand what Jesus was doing. Sometimes it's like that. Your trials, your tests. Your, your attack, all manner of things that is coming against you now will truly tell those who are for you and those who are not for you. God allowed trials and, 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 and attacks and, and, and mistakes or whatever you can call it, God allowed the storms to prune the people, to release people, to let people know where they stand when it comes to their relationship with you. So never give up. Or never throw in the tower and say, oh God, you see, everybody has abandoned me. No, never do that. In your trials, you will fail. That is why it's called in your trials. He didn't say in your trials with everybody. He didn't say in your trials with your family. Look at Job. In Job trial, the wife even advised him to curse God and die. In your trials, your closest allies will be the first to desert you. Your closest allies will be the first to tell you wrong words. Your closest allies, who you thought would be the ones to encourage you and prop you up, will be the first to abandon you and make you a caricature and make you an object of mockery. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says the stone that the builder have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Revelation chapter 1 talks about all those that pierce him. Oh, let's look at that on the screen. All those that pierce him, Revelation 1 verse 7, he said, all those that pierce him, they will see him and they will scream, oh, he was truly the son of God. 
Oh, look at that. Behold, he's coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. You see, that is why we change the prayer now to say our enemies must not die. Yes. Our colleagues and friends and all those that abandon us must not die. None of the disciples died except the Bible says except the one that is a son of perdition, which means it's the one that, you know, was going to go through that route. Peter did not die. James did not die. John Colum did not die. They saw Jesus go through his trials, and they saw Jesus came out of it. And they saw Jesus dominated it, and they saw Jesus became Lord of all. And that was what gave them the gusto, the audacity, and the boldness to go preach the gospel because they know that for real, God is real. Jesus is real. Sometimes when people leave you, when people abandon you, and people throw in the towers and never see anything good out of you, it's not the time you should see yourself down. It's time to summon more courage. It's time to say to yourself, it's okay, it's okay, um, it's okay. Jesus faced this several times in his ministry and his life. He taught and taught, and they abandoned him. Look at his disciples, the 12, and said, are you guys not going? They said, no, we are not going because you have the word of life. See? So in your trials, you should expect people to abandon you. Close ones, not even from far. Most people that will even support you might be from far. If you see the person that volunteered to go and take the body of Jesus from the cross was Joseph of Arimathea a man of influence who was following Jesus from far. That is why I tell you that God can never leave you without a consolation. He will never leave without a consolation. There must be somebody God is going to prepare that will be, you know, one might just be, he might be in a place of a million. That's how God works. One person could take a place of a million people. Imagine just Joseph of Arimathea. He provided the tomb, provided the clothes, provided everything, went to the, to the people in authority and demanded for the body of Jesus. Where was his apostles? Where was everyone that he has healed? Where was Nicodemus? Where was Matthew? Call all the guys that Jesus ate with, visited. Where was Lazarus? Where was Mary? Where was Martha? Call all of them that Jesus had a personal encounter with. When Jesus was facing his own trial, no one showed up. Brother, when you're going through your trials, you're going through your temptations, you're going through your test, you're going through your attack, you're going through persecution for the sake of the gospel, you must not be surprised when people leave. You must not be surprised when people abandon you. You must not be surprised when they write you off. But you see, the third day is coming. Oh yes, the day is going to come. That in spite of all that you have been through, God was using it to work out things for your good. Yes. If that thing did not happen, you would not have known who she is. If that thing did not happen, you would not have known who he is. If that thing did not happen, you would not have known who they are. If that thing did not happen, you would not have known who they were. So situation revealed people. Trials. When trial comes into our life, it's time to prune the boat. It's time to prune the farm. It's time to prune the people. Those that are with you will stand with you, and those that are not with you will be removed from your life. Some, you must understand the levels. Some are root. Some are just uh, uh, the, the, the stick. Some are branches. Some are leaves. You see, situation reveals. When God gives you true root, it doesn't matter what happens around you. They have accumulated enough to keep the tree alive. So in, in spite of the faces the tree is going to go through, whether winter, whether drought, whatever it is, because the, the roots have accumulated enough, that tree will not die. But the day there is a little splash of water and sand and all that it needed, you see it start blossoming. That's what we are talking about. And I pray in this broadcast that God will send you roots, not just vines, because they can be peeled off and used for something else. Not just branches, not just leaves. Can I ask you a question? Find out from your friends who they are to you. Find out, are you a root? Are you a stem? Are you a vine? Are you a branch? Or you are leaves? Because when it's dry, the leaves will peel off. Yes. It's easy to chop off the, root, the, the, uh, the, 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 the branches to make fire. It's easy to peel the vines. 
it's easy to even cut down the, the, the tree, but it's not easy sometimes to take out the root when it has actually lingered around the ground. So find out from your friends, are they leaves? Because leaves will go when it's, when it's winter, when it's cold. Trees will dry up and so many things. So find out because everyone will go through trials. You see, so it should not be a shock. It shouldn't be a surprise. You know, I love what the scripture says that I think in First Peter, First Peter chapter, chapter 1, it talked about you must not think that strange things has happened to you. Strange things. You see, don't think that strange things has happened to you. Don't think so. Because God is not strange. So why must you think that strange things has happened to you because of what you are going through? All right, First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. See what it says. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. First Peter. I hope you are blessed and encouraged in this broadcast. Now, sometimes we're really seeing the technical issues here in terms of our, our networking, but it will be uploaded for you uh, today or tomorrow uh, for you to enjoy it. All right. First Peter chapter 4, sorry, and verse 12 said, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fairy trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. See! Can we read this in the Message Bible? Ah, I love this. Don't think it is strange. Friends, when life gets really, really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God, hi, is not on the job. Hey! La ko paradesa gekata baladayata. La ko paradesa gata leka paladayata. Father, I love you. Oh, yes, I love you. Yes, that's what you should do when you face a storm. Yes, look at what the scripture says. It says, friends, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It says, friends, when life gets really difficult, when life gets really tough, when life got really hard, because you turn your left, there is nobody to look to. You turn your right, there is nobody to look to. You turn back, you turn everywhere, there is no body. No wonder I say, look up to the hills from where your help comes from. Your help does not come from the east, west, south. He comes from the Lord. When he comes from the Lord, he knows how to distribute the help from which source he should come from. Oh, boy, I love this. Oh, glory to Jesus. You know, this is how I read the Bible. It just brings satisfaction. He brings calmness to the restlessness of your soul to let you know that the word of God is alive. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to conclusion that God is not on the job. Don't get to conclusion. Hey, friends, when life gets real difficult, it might not be real difficult, now it's starting. But when it really gets difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God is not on the job. Don't do that. Situations, my, you know, somebody say, if God is there, why am I going through this? If God is there, if God truly, if God, all right, all right, all right, God is still on the throne. Yes, it's still on the throne. Take a deep breath. Maybe you're at the point of your house being repossessed or your car or one of those who are going through maybe demolitions or relocation, whatever it is. God is still on the throne. Yes. It doesn't matter what it is. When things get really difficult, it's encouraging us. Don't think that God is not on his job. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's read that again one more time. Friends, when life gets really, really difficult. Oh, boy. When life get re gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God is not on the job. Let's read this in the New Living Translation. This is powerful. He says, oh, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fairy trials you are going through, as if something strange were happening to you. See, he said you mustn't think so, that something strange. Don't think so, that something strange. No, a thousand times no, a million times no. Yes, even when you shed tears, is it tears to let the world know that, yeah, it's painful, because we are human there. Yes. But God is alive. 
Yes. It doesn't matter what it is. Whether you are accused or you are, maybe somebody accused you or you are accused or you are caught in the very act. It doesn't matter what it is. Jehovah is alive. God is alive. Whether you are misunderstood or understood, whether it, whatever it is, God is alive. Oh, glory. He has not lost his job. He is still in his throne. No situation is big enough in this world to move him. He is that God that dwells in unapproachable light where no man can see or no man can even come close to. So no situation that you and I are going through that, that, that tells or suggests in any way that God has abandoned you. No, no. A million times, no. He said, what will separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulations, shall trials, he listed them. Persecutions, he said, none of these things. He said, nay, in, in all of this, I am more than a conqueror. Glory to Jesus. Don't give up. Let's not give up. Let's continue to go. Let's continue to push. Let's continue to push. You see, there are certain times you can't explain anything because you have done all you can. You've fasted, you've given, you've sold, you've tithed, you've done everything. You've, you've prayed and you are still don't give up. The Bible says in Ephesians, it said, after you have done all, to stand. To stand. You see, after you've done all, after you've done everything, he said, to stand. Yes. Because sometimes, you got to, after you've done everything, you got to stand. You got to wait patiently for the answers to come. Wow. I pray for you in this broadcast. And in spite of your trial, be strengthened. In spite of all you're going through right now, be encouraged by the Holy Ghost. In spite of the rumors, in spite of what they are saying, be encouraged in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying you didn't do it. I'm not saying you are not facing trial. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, in spite of what it is, you are still beloved of God. God still loves you more than what it is or what has happened. God loves you. He loves you so much that no matter what you've done, it's not big enough for God to despise, hate, or kill you. God loves you so much that when he could not even, just to show how much he loves us, he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. So if God could give his son to die, there is nothing in this world that you and I are going to do that will make God give up on us. So be encouraged in this broadcast. Stop running around thinking it's somebody somewhere. If it is somebody somewhere, in the name of Jesus will fix it. But if the thing is persisting, you need to ask God, is this something that I have to go through? As I sign out in this broadcast, you see, Jesus went to Gethsemane to pray. He went there to pray. The Bible said he prayed to the point where his own, own sweat was like a blood. He went there to pray for what? To make the thing that he was to go through pass away. You know, there's a difference between when you preach something or say something, when the reality dawns on you. You know, it's easy to tell somebody, I'm blessed, I'm prosperous, I'm a success, until poverty hits you. Then we'll see if you're going to continue to say, I am blessed, I'm rich, I'm successful. You see, situation comes to try us out, comes to test us out. If truly what we are saying, we really understand it, or what we are saying, we really mean it. Or we're just playing with words. But we are not playing with words. We have come to know who we have come to believe. That he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He cannot change. Look, there is nothing too big that God is not bigger than. He has, he has filled everything. The Bible said, he that ascended, ascended above heaven so that he can fill everything. You see, uh, uh, Ephesians 4, at verse 10. He that ascended, ascended above heaven. So where he has to fill everything from there. So this world is just too small. The challenges that we go through is just too small to be able to demean us and make God say no, it's over with us. It's not true. So Jesus went to Gethsemane and he prayed, Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass over. But remember for three and a half years, he has been telling his apostles that he was going to die. But when the time came for the fulfillment of those things, he started praying that God should take it away. But I'm happy that he didn't because even himself have to conclude by saying, Father, not my will, but your will be done. There are situations you got to go through. 
There are mockeries. There are shame. There are things you got to go through. Behind some of these suits, we see some of these great preachers where they are crying, they are pains, there are so many stuff they go through. Don't think that the suit, the car, the drive, those are just the external things. We go through a lot of stuff. Let nobody fool you. Let nobody fool you. We are men of God does not mean that that's what we call men of God because the man there is where the issue is. Is where the issue is. So Jesus wanted to pray away what he was born, what he was sent here to go through. Sometimes we also do that. We want to pray away or command away or cast away what God says we must go through. We will go through it. We will receive grace. We will receive strength. We will receive ability, might to go through the process. And at the end of the day, we are going to win. Hallelujah. Don't pray away what God wants you to go through. If you, if you are going through a situation, you have cast out the devil, you have commanded the demons, you have fasted everything, and you see there is no change, it's a sign that you got to go through it. Yes, settle down and go through it. And you are going to come out on top in the name of Jesus Christ. Be strengthened, be blessed, be lifted. I pray that the word of God you have heard will build faith, it will stabilize you, it will root you, it will cause you to understand the dynamics of God's going in your life. I declare that the anointing of God's spirit will encourage you, it will build you, it will strengthen you in the task and what is ahead of you. You are a success. It doesn't matter what you look like right now. You might be as broke as broke. It doesn't mean that you're not a millionaire. You might be as, as minus right now in your account. It doesn't mean that that account will not touch money. Money is coming in there. It doesn't matter how single you might be called. You might be known in the whole community as the headquarter of a single sister or a single brother. It doesn't conclude anything. You are going to get married. The right man is coming on your way. In the name of Jesus. People might be mocking you, no job, but prepare yourself for a better job. No matter what it is you are going through, no eye have seen, no ears have heard. It does not enter into the heart of any man the things that God will do for them that love him. Do you love him? Go to the trials. In the name of Jesus, be encouraged and know that he is with you. He has not left you. Finally, his absence does not mean that he is not with you. The trials and the trials or whatever you're going through does not mean that it's not there. If you cannot trace his hand, trust him. He's with you. Thank you for joining me in this broadcast. I can close with that leading you to Christ. If you, are, if you are watching this broadcast and you have not asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, please let's do that together. It's very simple to do. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this word I've heard. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. I ask you to forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Thank you for dying for me. And thank you for taking my place. Thank you for accepting me in the beloved. From today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and that you're coming again. Thank you for all that you've done for me, for all the sufferings, for all the pain and everything you went through for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. Look for a Bible-believing church, a church where the word of God is taught so that you can grow, a church that I call Christocentric church, a church where Jesus is emphasized, not materialism. Jesus is emphasized. Look for such church because Jesus is the center of it all. Everything revolves around him. So we must all the time point to him. As we point to him, every other thing will locate us. Thank you for joining in this broadcast. Join us another time for a part two of this broadcast, and I trust it shall be a blessing to you. Don't forget, don't forget, in your trial, he's closer to you than anybody you can think of in this world. God bless you. See you again. My name is Samuel Ogadi. Bye for now. <laughs>